Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Jerome Catholic Church. We welcome our parishioners and visitors. We are so glad you have chosen to join us today as we celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Today is the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we prepare ourselves for the sacred mystery of the liturgy, please take a moment to make sure cell phones are turned off. Great faith conquers difficulties and sorrows. Jesus heals a Canaanite woman's daughter who is tormented by a demon. Great faith overcomes racial and social barriers. Though sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Jesus ministers to the pagan woman. Let us pray for the gift of faith so that we can approach the Lord with confidence. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brethren, in order to worthily celebrate this sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. 
prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation, and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the death? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they now have disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, <clears throat> At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But a woman came and did Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, Help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) 
Good evening. Years ago, I remembered a cardinal instituting or introducing a certain theology whom he called it the theology of the crumbs. As he would say that scraps, crumbs, even though how useless they are, how little they are, there is certain value on that particular small pieces that sometimes go into waste unnoticed or sometimes in our own way of looking at it those are the things that just go onto the trash well the cardinal as he also explained this theology as he would say the theology of the crumbs he would also relate it in our gospel today that even the woman who have acknowledged of receiving the value of the very grace of God, even how little is this, even how it's like a scrap or just like a drop that would just simply be given to her as long as it's coming from God, seeing that great value that even how small it is, she would say, it is already enough for her to obtain the very grace of God. Well, my dear friends, truly, this is hardly noticed by us and looking on the value of little things in our own life, we could say that little things could also bring forth greater things. Even Jesus himself would recognize this in the many parables that he is trying to teach us. Like the parable of the mustard seed, as he would say, first it becomes a small seed, but when it grows and becomes a big tree, it would serve its maximum purpose and it would serve a lot of people. Jesus also noticed the widow in her poor contribution in the temple, as she would say that this woman has given the greatest of all the gifts to the temple because even though she just gave a very small amount, but what she has given is given according from her heart. This has given greater value as well. And in our gospel today, this woman from Cana, who would try to attempt to get near unto Jesus, as she would gladly solicit the very mercy and compassion of God. I know for sure it's really a struggle to get near to Jesus, and even there was an attempt of her to be sent away. And even to the extent of talking to Jesus it is also a way of trying to convince Jesus more in order to help her. But Jesus was so amazed and admired her faith, even to the extent of telling Jesus, yes, even those are scraps eaten by the dogs, I could still receive it for as long as this could only provide the solution and the relief for my daughter who is tormented by a demon. My dear friends, in our own life, truly is a contemplation of the many things that the Lord and God has given within our own selves. Sometimes the smallest things, as what I have said, could bring forth and result forth greater heights within our own lives as well looking at a certain value in the perspective of this woman who has shown her great faith and trust in the loving Lord. It is in her own belief and sincerity that as what she would see it, even it scrums, it is a single drop, even it is just a minute detail that Jesus could ever give her. It will always matter for her because she was firm 
she was strong and she has that faith that she believed that only God could always give her the healing. The second point, my dear friends, is to recall the story that I have given you about the theology of the crumbs is what Cardinal Rosales has thought was, he mentioned it also that the theology that he was teaching to people is to contribute or give even to the minute details or resources that they have. For example, the small amount that they could always contribute, they put in their humble jars, these are pennies or these are just small amount of money that they could always put that on their own simple bottle and thus contribute and give it in order to help the poor could really make a difference. And thus, as what they were trying to organize this drive of contributing in crumbs has sustained and helped millions of people around the world, especially to address poverty. Well, my dear friends, it would look like it is a very usual type of contribution or it is a usual type of scheme of giving forth in their own generosity. But if we could really look onto it, there is a spiritual value with it. It teaches us that and make us realize, therefore, that there is no such poor person that that person could never give. Or, for instance, shall we say, there is no such a rich person that person has no capacity also to receive. And thus, this kind of disposition that the Lord all teaches us is that that what we give is something that we should also value. That we have not just realized that we do not just simply give in such a way for the sake of giving. The giving that we do should always be given with a certain value and a certain disposition within our own selves. Yes, we give our excess, and those are also appreciated by the eyes of the loving God. But when we try to give and surrender something that is of greater value for us, and when we try to let it go and just simply dispose ourselves, why give? Because I know for sure that I make these personal sacrifices for myself. I know it is for a greater good and cause that my brother and sister would be able to receive something greater. And also on the other side of which there is no such rich person who is not able and have the capacity to receive. I think, my dear friends, today in our gospel, Jesus just have remarkably given this type of generosity to this woman. Yes, this woman needs something, but more than the reception she could ever receive, Jesus has generously recognized her greater faith. And for those who have received and enjoy such generosity coming from our Lord, those who are favored with the many riches of the world, there is also the need for all of us that we should also recognize that in one way or the other of our own life, we need also to receive. We need to have that particular disposition that we also need something. We need God. We need also to receive from our brothers and sisters. Yes, we say, thank the Lord, God has been good to me, but there could always be a space within our own selves that we also need something. We have all the capacity to have that kind of disposition to analyze, for instance, or pray to the loving Lord, which particular aspect in my life that I also need to receive something. 
And thus, it is also seen in the woman in our gospel today. She perfectly knows what she needs. She knows what she wanted. She wants the healing of her daughter. And she knows it is only Jesus who could give the remedy and the desire and the answer of our own hearts. And so, my dear friends, when we say of scraps and crabs, of the many useless things that probably in excess we could see in our own lives, let us ask the loving Lord to rechannel once again our own lives to this particular disposition. We do not just simply give the excess in our own lives, but we would also perfectly know and share what, could, what we could truly give in the right moment and in the right time. We also pray to the Lord to give us the attitude that we also have that disposition to receive. We could always realize that about our own generosity as well. Sometimes the root cause of our own selfishness is the lack of our own personal disposition that we have also the capacity to receive something. In humility, we need something to the Lord. We know that we also have something that we wanted the Lord to give us. The disposition to give and the capacity to know what we could receive is also something very vital and important in our spiritual life. And thus, my dear friends, we pray for the generosity of God today, that whatever is in our own heart, like the Canaanite woman, she knows perfectly even to the minute and the smallest things of all. God's generosity can never be outdone. And when we're able to receive something, for sure, there is something great that we could also share to the rest of the world. We all stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born in the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten to me, consubstantial to the Father. Through him all things were made. First man for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and the Holy Spirit was incarnate He was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day. And according to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory the church to live in the dead. And see no will have no reign. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life, proceeds in the Father and the Son. Who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and to look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. God is a merciful and loving Father who cares for all His children. No one is beyond the reach of God's loving embrace. We therefore turn to God, the Father, with confidence as we pray. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, for God's miracle of mercy, gathered from all nations and made acceptable at His altar, that she may be, faithful, be the faithful sacrament of mercy to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That we, as citizens of a free land, may take seriously our duty to speak out for our moral principles, doing our part to preserve the order that supports the gift of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those affected by the fires in Maui and their families, 
that they have strength, resilience, and healing, that they find the grace to rebuild their families, livelihoods, and the dwellings that were lost. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May our brothers and sisters in Christ, especially Nick Indra, find spiritual and physical renewal in you. We pray to the Lord. May our faithfully departed, Jim Murphy, be fed the heavenly bread as they become eternally in communion with you. We pray to the Lord. For Paul Kloss, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. With a Canaanite woman, we raise our voices to you, O Lord, in supplication. Grant, O Heavenly Father, that we may ask for in great faith and confidence to Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Reverend, may sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For through his paschal misery, he accomplished a marvelous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. So with all the angels and archangels, with the thrones and the dominions and all the hosts, and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory is without end. We acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed the Lord, Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit. He give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts. We are brought to you for consecration. The day may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
granted we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and the glorious martyrs and all the saints, in his constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity the pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you. At a passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. To Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him, in him, O God, the Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the fate of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Of God, you take. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ. 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 So warm in the dark, I thankful for the sunlight. We who live, we who die, are grateful for His gift. Thankful for His love. with understanding of the wheat of the wine united with his word and the love we share behold behold the Lamb Bless our lives, 
nourish all who hunger for this feast. Shelter them with peace. Behold, behold the Lamb of God, all who eat, all who drink shall Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ to those of this sacrament, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform of this image in earth, we may merit also to be his co heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us all be seated. Tonight is our family game night in the Fellowship Hall. All families of all sizes and ages are welcome to join. Drinks and desserts will be provided. Classes for the 2023-2024 are gearing up and you are invited to be a part. Educational opportunities for ages pre-K through adult. Stop by the table in the commons area to pick up some information about this upcoming year. 
Check the newsletter or Facebook for the registration link and details. The Knights of Columbus Council 5480 is holding their bi-weekly meeting this Tuesday at the Columbian Center. Rosary starts at 6.30 p.m. and the social meeting starts at 7 p.m. Light snacks will be provided. All Brother Knights are strongly encouraged to attend. Prep a meeting for RCIA, First Eucharist, and Confirmation are next Sunday in the Faith and Life classrooms. RCIA meets at 10, 8, uh, 10 15 a.m. Confirmation and First Eucharist meet at 1 15 p.m. Man, I'll call on them. Wilson and Norma. Today they celebrate their 55th wedding anniversary. Please come in the center. <laughs> Let us pray. We pray to you, O God, and we bless you, Creator of all things who in the beginning made man and woman, that they might form a communion of life and love. We also give you thanks for graciously blessing the family life of your servants, Wilson and Norma, so that might present an image of Christ's union with the church. Therefore, look with kindness upon them today, as you have sustained their communion amid joys and struggles, Renew their marriage covenant each day and increase their charity and strengthen them in the bond of peace so that together with all the circle of their children that surrounds them, they may forever enjoy your blessing to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary and God bless you always. Good evening, everyone. So, good news for y'all. Today, the church has a special on homilies. Buy one, get one free. Uh, uh, just kidding, this isn't a homily. Um, uh, no, um, so, I'm coming now to the end of my time here at St. Jerome's. Uh, in fact, actually, I'll be hitting the road tomorrow morning right after the 7 a.m. Mass to return back to my seminary for the upcoming year. Uh, so I go to, I'll be entering my eighth year of formation and continuing my studies at the Theological College, the National Seminary of the Catholic University of America uh, up in Washington, D.C. So tomorrow morning I'll, I'll hit the road and pray to God to have mercy on me that 95 is not 95. Um, miracles can happen. Uh, I hold out hope uh, despite all odds. Um, but, um, so as I now come, I think it's, uh, I've been here seven months. I, I don't really do math well, and apparently counting since February is hard. Um, but I think that's seven months. If not, oh well. Um, you know, you don't need to do math to be a priest. <laughs> I gave up on that years ago. Um, but uh, it's been a wonderful time to be at this parish. As some of you may know, uh, I've been for the last about 15 months on what we refer to as our pastoral year. So there's a time that the seminarians return from the seminary back to their home dioceses for an extended period in the trenches, so to speak, to really have an opportunity uh, to really see what it's like in the parish life, uh, to gain experience and to really, you know, really make sure uh, this is what we would want to be doing for the rest of our lives. And for me, it's been... Uh, 15 months of tremendous blessing, completely unexpected in many respects of what would occur. Uh, as I, you know, look back on what my expectations were for this year going into it, it's been, those expectations have been met, but in none of the ways I thought they would be. 
uh, such as it is when we follow the Lord, whatever we have in mind, the Lord has something even better. Uh, and if we are, in fact, willing to follow him, he will bring us truly on an amazing journey, and we will uh, just see and encounter and do things we never thought before possible or could even have dreamt of. I know for myself in the last, you know, these 15 months, started with um, a blessed opportunity for some study abroad in Germany, and then uh, ministering in three different parishes, uh, two different Catholic schools, one grade school, one high school, uh, also one campus ministry, uh, college campus ministry, excuse me, and also a ton of other ad hoc work at the diocesan level, getting to be involved in various uh, operations across the diocese, uh, east and west, mostly with in terms of um, youth ministry and vocations work, uh, promoting vocations, but uh, a variety of other things as well. And so for me, it's been just a tremendous time of, of joy and growth, getting to see all the things that the Lord is working in this diocese. Uh, well, actually, just a snippet of it, really. There's so much more even, too. And I am extremely grateful for to the Lord for all that he's doing, not just here in this parish, but, but across our diocese. We really are living in, and it's not my, just my own opinion, but many of the other priests and seminarians share the sentiment that we are really living in a blessed time, a uh, sort of uh, new Pentecost in this diocese with the tremendous amount of growth uh, that is occurring left and right in marvelous, unexpected ways. And so I want to say that uh, to you all because... Uh, I think it's just awesome and ought to be said. We ought to give thanks to the Lord for these many good things. In particular, I want to thank the people of this parish for their generosity to me and your hospitality. It really is a welcoming parish, uh, which has been uh, just a delight to be here, to be welcomed, to get to know many of you, pray with you, work alongside uh, many of you in various ministries of the parish. And, of course, I would be amiss uh, if I didn't, of course, once again say thank you to Father George for hosting me. Um, I've been saying it a lot recently, but it shouldn't be a broken record to say thank you to folks uh, who have done us great good. So thank you again, Father. Um, and lastly, I just want to conclude with, with two things. One, uh, well, two requests. One, please continue to uh, pray for me uh, because I, I need it. I have, uh, from today's date, just about nine months until my diaconate ordination uh, in May. I don't know the official date yet, but it, I believe it will be the Saturday before Pentecost. So also, by the way, uh, if that is in fact the date, y'all are invited uh, to come up to Richmond to the cathedral for that. My two classmates and I, Sam and Matt, are very excited to, to be ordained deacons um, soon, uh, soon and very soon. So that's very exciting. So please keep me and, and my brothers, Sam and Matt, in your prayers as we prepare in these last few months for ordination. And then please just uh, pray for an increase in vocations in our diocese for priests, deacons, and religious, that the men, young men and women of our diocese, including in this parish of St. Jerome's, would courageously and zealously, generously answer the Lord's you know, invitation to this wonderful life of service of God and his church uh, and our neighbors. So uh, right now we have 26 seminarians in our diocese, including five guys who just entered this fall, uh, which for a relatively small diocese like ours is really good. Uh, we don't go by numbers, but um, sometimes we like to, um, you know, uh, the various dioceses, you know, we like to throw jabs to see who's better. Um, and fraternal fun. But uh, we, we really are blessed, actually. It's a sign of great growth in our diocese. And a lot of that really depends on the support of the people in the parishes just like you by your prayers uh, and just kind words and and, well, most of all, your prayers to encourage us along the way and to foster vocations. You know, it starts, it can start young. I was seven when I received my vocation from the Lord. Uh, some of my buddies uh, were even younger. So uh, I say that also in mind to the young men and ladies in this parish. You're not too young to start discerning, and you're not too young to be a saint. God calls us to be saints here and now, in the life, 
that he has given us. So courageously answer the Lord's call. And as I was saying earlier, you will find that if you do so, you will have a wonderfully, marvelously joyful life doing things that you could have never dreamt possible. And so with that, I uh, shall conclude. And just again, uh, thank you. And please keep myself, my brothers, and our discerners in your prayers. May God be praised. Thank you to Andrew and our continued prayers on your journey towards the priesthood and your St. Jerome's um, parish family continue to be one with you and um, may God bless you always. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass has been offered in a go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen.